All right, guys, so today on this episode of How To's, we are going to do the gallery gaskets on this, um, also water pump. This is a 3.7 VHR. HRs, VHRs, uh, they're all the same on doing gallery gaskets, even DEs, but DEs require a different gallery gasket. So yeah, this is a 2012 G37S, I think. No, non-S. So it's a, just a base G37, and yeah, it's a VHR. This is also a coworker's car of ours. He says he's got a little coolant leak in the back, so we're gonna check that out too. But um, first things first, when you're doing a gallery gasket job, there's two ways to do it. You can either leave the front end on, and you can kind of work in this little space. You gotta take the radiator out and uh, the coolant hoses and intakes and the coolant box. So you can do it that way. If you've, like, if you've done it a ton of times and you feel comfortable working in that small of a space, you can do that. But on this one, we're gonna take the, take the whole front end apart. We're gonna take the headlights off, course port off. We're gonna flip the AC condenser over, uh, pull the radiator off so we can see all in there. I like doing it the, the second option because when you, when you get all that out, you don't want to get the car back together and then have like a leak somewhere or you didn't clean something good enough and cause a leak. So um, we're going to show you that way today. Um, so yeah, let's get started taking this front end apart and do this gallery gasket. Quick disclaimer, if you do not feel comfortable working on cars, don't try and do this. This is a very, like when you pull the timing cover off and you're looking, you're setting your timing marks. If you miss something and you get everything back together, your motor will have issues. So. Big disclaimer, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, I'm sure there's shops around you that can do it for you. If you feel comfortable doing it, here's a video on how to do it. When you're taking the whole front end apart like how I'm doing right now, um, the AC lines do go through the core support. So like on G35s and uh, 350Zs, you're able to work around um, the AC. Like you can, the core support goes kind of behind it. So you're able to move the condenser and go up. But since these condensers um, are one with the radiator and we're taking the radiator out, we will have to disconnect um, the air conditioning. And you just get it refilled when it's done after. Okay, so, and if you are taking the front end apart and you are taking the condenser off, there are two 10 mil bolts right here that make it really, really convenient to pop these lines off. But you're not gonna wanna do that until you drain your Freon. If you take these off right here, it's gonna blow free on at like 10 million PSI. Just insert like a big explosion right here, you know? So yeah, don't do that. They have these drain, um, it's like an AC tool. This basically clips right on here. Uh, make sure it's closed beforehand. There's uh, arrows closed and open. Make sure it's closed. This pops right on right here. Like that, make sure that it stays on there. Uh, we drain ours into a bucket and then we have like a recycling thing that we dump our um, our uh, Freon into. Try not to just let this go in the air. I mean, it's still gonna have a little bleed off, but less than if you just dump it into the air. This stuff's really bad to breathe. So we're gonna get this started like that. Get that started and we're gonna walk away and we're gonna let that do its thing. The lengths on these 10 mils are specific for the radiator condenser lines. I always put them back just so I don't get them mixed up. All the other ones are pretty standard. We are going to drain the coolant right now. Um, this is probably one of the first steps I should have done because then they could have been draining the whole time I was taking the front end apart. A little more time efficient, but I, I spaced out. But we're going to drain the coolant right now because we're going to disconnect the radiator hoses. And if we disconnect the radiator hoses right now, it's going to make a soupy mess. So we're gonna do that, let that drain. And then it's ready to, time to pull the course board off of this. And it's kind of trickling out right here. It'll take forever, but if you reach up and you grab the coolant cap, watch how much faster it'll go. That's basically just making airflow so it's not a suction coming out. His coolant looks really clean, but he wanted to do a coolant flush too. He, he's also got that uh, coolant link that we talked about. That one's on the back of the motor, so we'll kill two birds with one stone right now. We'll just get it started right now. It's cool. He's got a little magnetic drain plug too, so when I pulled the when I pulled the drain plug out, it stuck to the pan, and look, I got nothing on my hands. 
Now I'm going to disconnect these two um, trans cooler lines and the radiator is ready to come out. <clears throat> we are pulling the serpentine belt off right now. And we're gonna start pulling the front part of the motor apart. When you get to this point, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you put a 3 8 ratchet inside the tensioner and loosen that up and then we'll take the tensioner off, pull power steering pulley off, pull alternator off, uh, pull AC compressor off, um, pull these off, and then pull this one off. Uh, we will then drain the, <clears throat> drain the uh, oil pan and unbolt the oil pan. There's two 12 mils that go up through the oil pan. Take those off first and then we'll go around and unbolt all these 10 mils. Unplug everything obviously and take the water pipe out and then the front timing will be showing. And when you're pulling the uh, power steering pump off, there's a little sensor on the bottom of this, of uh, the high pressure hose. Make sure to unplug that first or you will break the, uh, the sensor. They're super, super fragile. So if you follow this hose down, you can see that it's unplugged right now, but that sensor breaks really easy. So there's that. Then we can get to the alternator. And when you are doing the alternator, um, Make sure to undo the battery, because if you don't, the chances of you grounding out the alternator is very high, and then you'll have to replace the fuse up here. So you go up to your battery, and there's gonna be two, um, at least for this motor, there's a, or this car, there's two 12 mils up there. Just go like that, move those to the side, and you're good. And then we will grab the alternator, Drop that down. There's a couple sensors here under it. Unplug those first. <clears throat> come on, come on, click. There you go. And whenever I take things off, um, like for the alternator bracket right here, I know this is the alternator bracket. I just keep these bolts together because then when when you assemble it, everything's everything's there still. <clears throat> Unless it's like just a, a bunch of random 10 mils, 12 mils, whatever, that are like the same size, uh, then it doesn't really matter. You just take it off. That's for the alternator. Then you got a plug back here on the alternator as well. Kind of kind of a pain to get to. Press right there on the back side. And undo that. And then undo this clip right here for the like this little bracket, I don't know what to call it, but bracket that holds the cable. Just undo it from the back side, just like that. Move that out of the way. And then get a little pry bar, pry the alternator off. Like so. And then once you get to right here, um, some people leave the alternator on. I like to have space for when I'm cleaning it. So I take the alternator off, all it is is one 12 mil. And then um, when the alternator is free, you can get the back side of this clip right here that goes to those bottom two sensors. <clears throat> so there's that little clip that I was telling you. It's easier to get to. It's still a little pain in the ass, but um, it's easier to get to when the alternator is free. Take that, take that nut that you had, put that back on there so you don't lose it. And when you go to install the, uh, the alternator back on, the nut that you need is right there. I just kind of push these wires back for now, like that. So I'll get a zip tie and zip tie this over to that. And then that way we won't have to uh, redo car steering fluid as well. So there's that. Um, then we will unplug. I kind of like, I'll start from one area and like loosen up like when I was doing the, when I was doing the pulleys, I, I pulled all the 14s out that I could right now just to kind of like eliminate some steps. So now got the power steering off, got the alternator off. I'm gonna work on the harness section and I'll probably work my way that way. 
and then do the compressor last. That's just a way that I do things. It's not like you have to do it that way. It just, that kind of works for me the best. So I'll get these two front, these two front grounds first, like that. Don't drop your bolts. And I always, um, like for grounds and stuff, I just put the bolts back because some of these, some of these bolts are different lengths and say that you put too long of a bolt right here, it'll break the inside of the case and now you're gonna have an oil leak. Just take that, kind of fold that up there. This stuff just needs to be out of your way, so um, you don't gotta do anything crazy with that harness. And right here, undo these two plugs. that this one's on the underside pop that out like that and then grab the one for your dipstick like that and then since we already have the tent in our hand let's pull the dipstick out like so Kind of move that to the side like that and sometimes these uh these come out nicely sometimes they don't we'll see what this one wants to do i just do like a little shimmy shake at first try and get it out this one uh doesn't want to come out so grab a pry bar and go under right here just kind of hold it and it'll pop up and these have an o-ring on them make sure that that o-ring um make sure that o-ring stays or if it's if it's in super bad condition um you'll have to replace it because if you don't have that o-ring on there you will have an oil leak from there too and then uh we will take this power steering bracket off uh it's two 14s back here as well so i have some shallow mount sockets that work very nicely for this and the reason we take this bracket off first is because you have to get this bracket off. It's kind of a dumb design that Nissan did, but you got to take this bracket off in order to get this bracket off. In my opinion, I feel like this bracket should have gone on top. I guess that's why I'm not an engineer, right? Same thing. Keep your bolts in the same orientation. Those mount to the block and that goes like that. And we had already undid our 14s for here before. So you can pull that out like that. <clears throat> and now that we've kind of, we've kind of caught up in this area, um, all the wires are off on this side now. The accessories are off, blah, blah, blah. Um, these grounds right here, I'll work my way over here. Put those 12s back. It's kind of weird. Um, so on these cars, the, the grounds are 12s on the motor and they are 10s on the chassis, kind of random. I feel like these should be 10s too. So just undo that like that, set that ground off to the side, and then we'll get our clip remover like that. Now grab our 10 mil again. What I like to do on these plates up top is, yeah, you probably could undo this clip right here. Um, the chances of breaking a clip are pretty high. So, and breaking a bolt is not high. So that's why I just undo these, I undo these plates like this, because then you're, your clips stay good. And then you just kind of push that out of your way again. Put your bolts back. And then we will work down to the AC compressor now. So that one can stay. We'll undo this clip. And be very, uh, very like cautious with these, uh, these plugs over here, since they're only single wire plugs or like two wire plugs, they're very small. You can break them and then you won't have AC. So we're going to take this uh, AC compressor off now. I always break the bolts loose while all the other ones are on because these, these sometimes are kind of tight. So if you, uh, if you take these off like one at a time, this has the like the ability to spin. 
so you don't want to do that. No, this one in the back, it's uh, you'll see like a little notch in the AC compressor. It's kind of hard to see, but it's back there. Now they're all loose. I'll start with that back one since it's the hardest one to get to. Put your socket in there, hold it with your fingers. Gonna move that and go like that with it, and set it out of your way. And now we will um, we will drain the oil pan and pop the oil pan off. Put a little drain bucket under there. So I have these uh, these tools from Gear Inch. They are 10 mils on an extension, and the 10 never comes off. They're super super convenient. And on the back side of the pan, closest to the subframe, there's a 10 mil that's kind of a bitch to get to, but with this, it makes it just easy super easy so i use that <clears throat> it's this one right here um if you were to have like a straight socket it would hit this or you wouldn't be able to be on it straight this one i can be at, all the way at this angle right here and i can still get it so i do that and then on this side normally right to the left of of that hard one to get to i'll bring this bolt out um about halfway and leave it there. And that's because when I crack the pan loose from the from the motor, the drain plug is on this side, so I'll have the, the drain plug undone, so it'll drain out of this side as well. Okay, so all those are out except that last one. I'll grab my 14. And I'll break that loose. We had already drained most of the oil, so that's why none came out. And I go under this little uh, this little knockout piece on the on the bottom of the pan. Get it started like that, and just kind of give it like a little bit. But that's why I leave one in, so that when it dumps, it dumps out the. Um, the drain hole. We'll lift this back up a little bit. Oh, there's part of his gallery gasket right there. So that is, that's a gallery gasket, what we were replacing. So just by the looks of that, this, uh, the gallery gaskets are probably non-existent if I were to take a guess. So now that we got the, uh, the pan off, and we found gallery gasket material in the bottom of the pan. Pretty much guaranteed that uh, this thing needs gallery gaskets. Basically, gallery gaskets, um, they hold your oil pressure. So the unfortunate thing about G's is they don't have a gauge like the 350Z's do. You can like plug into a, to like an OBD2 reader and read oil pressure that way, but not a lot of people do that with like live data and stuff. So. Um, Drop the pan, got a gasket in there. There's a, there's a couple 12s inside the bottom of this. Here, I'll grab a flashlight so you can see it. So under here, right up against the case, there's gonna be, there's gonna be a 12 right there that you take out. And another 12 right there. Those are the only two that you need to take out to get the cover off. If you don't get those, if you don't get those 12s out of here, you will crack your cover. It's guaranteed. So those two are out, and now it is time to get the cover off. Well, we got to get all those tens off first, but. So the underside of the motor is uh, taken care of, and now we'll work up top. Get my little, my little favorite ten over here, and I just I'll start on the left side, like I said before, and kind of take all these off. There's that one. This one's out. This one's out. Go to here. That one you need a wrench for because if you put a socket on there, even with this little guy right here, if you get that on there, it'll break this tab off. So we'll do that one with a wrench. That one's for power steering. I 
I got a handful of these bolts right here. I'm gonna put those down. Sucks when uh like doing these covers. Normally when you get it loose you can do it with your fingers. But since all the RTV and stuff's in there, it kinda acts as like a thread locker, so it's tight the whole way out. Pull the fuel rail one off. That is a 12. Just kinda don't don't push that too far out of the way because you don't want to kink or bend or do anything to that line right there. Because then you'll have to replace your uh your regulator right here. Okay, so now that we got um, all of the all the accessories are off, all the pulleys are off, the wire harness is off, the the pan is dropped, um, the outside tens of the cover are off. I'm gonna go ahead and do the the water pipe right here. So there's three tens that hold this in. So there's those three tens. Sometimes this comes out easy. Sometimes it does not. Give it a little twist because there is an O-ring back there, so you want to free up the O-ring instead of just pulling. And this one's going to be a pain, so we'll put a little pry bar in there. And this, you got to turn it to a little 90 degree right there, slide it out. And there's that O-ring that I was talking to you about. So now the water pipe's out, we are going to do the uh, the remainder of the tens on the inside of the cover. Well, I guess not inside, the inner portion of the tens. So there's four right there around the, around the water pipe hole. There's one right there. And then we already broke loose. We broke the crank loose. So we'll pull this out right now. And to get these off, you just kind of shimmy back and forth, and it'll start walking out. That. Keep that close by, because you're going to need that to set timing. And then this should be the, the last 10. Always double check if there's another bolt left, because if you pry and there's a bolt left, you will crack the case. This is the case, what I'm referring to. So we're good, we're good. Good. Okay, all the bolts are out and the cover's ready to come off. If you look up here at the top, you can kind of, um, you can scrape the, the old gasket material away, like the seep through from when the motor was put together at the factory. And there's gonna be um, like a little opening. Oh, there it is. There's like a little opening to where you can start your prying from so you don't like mar up the, the whole cover so you get that in there like that and just kind of do a little twist like that that keeps things nice so you put one in one in like that and then I'll go grab another one and there's another uh, there's another opening over here as well but and you just kind of work your way around um, Work your way around the cover. And if you feel resistance, double check to see if you're missing a, um, a bolt. Because they do kind of hide from you. So the cover is freed up right there. So now if we look in here, the gallery gaskets are under this, uh, this one and this one. So, but in order to get to those, we have to set the motor to top dead center. And the way you do that is there's, um, let me grab a little pokey thing so I can show you. There's a mark on the case right here. Um, like literally this little, little bump on the case that I'm touching with the flathead. That's a timing mark. This is a timing mark right here. And then this is also a timing mark. You'll see it on the oil pump. This is your oil pump right here. Um, so basically what you wanna do is you wanna get, you wanna get this dot right here on your cam phaser. You wanna get that dot and you wanna get that dot on these marks. So we'll put, we'll put the crank pulley back on. We'll spin it over and uh, 
get these marks in top dead center. And then when we do that, we can pull the chain off and start getting to these guy gaskets. I'm going to tighten this up and move this. Go back a tiny bit. Like so. So if you see the that timing dot right there, um, it is perfectly in line with that little uh, nipple or bump, whatever you want to call it on the inner case. Both of those are lined up and then when you look down here, um, you can't see anything yet on the, the crank lineup, but when I pull this bolt out of here, uh, the keyway will be one tooth to the right of uh, that mark down there. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll pull that crank off and it'll be easier. So that keyway, if you look at it, if you look at it head on, it looks like it's it's not right, but that's just how Nissan did it. So like this keyway, uh, the Woodruff key is right here in the center of those two teeth. Uh, just make sure that the tooth to the left of the keyway is lined up there. Um, when I do it, I just make sure that the Woodruff key is kind of right, like a tooth over kind of. So now, um, we can take the uh, tensioner off and the guide off. We'll pull this chain off and get the, the gaskets out of there. And then you wanna make sure that you got slack. Um, basically, when if this wasn't at top dead center, it would still have slack in it but these marks wouldn't be lined up. So since I took the tensioner off and uh, we're, still, we're still on time, we're good. So now you just gotta pull the, uh, pull the chains off, find out where it wants to come off, which is on this right side over here, like so. All right, so we got the timing chain off, the tensioners are off, the guide's off. Um, we're going to pull the tensioner arm off right now, and then we'll be able to pull those gallery gaskets off. I believe, don't quote me on it, but I think this is a number two Phillips head. Basically, it's a, a bigger one. Um, if you put a small one in here and try and get to these, you guaranteed will strip these. And if you strip one of these Phillips, it's, it's game over. The ones that we actually, I hope the ones that he got, um, they came with Allen head replacements. They're a little bit... Uh, a little bit harder to strip, still doable, but um, just apply a ton of pressure in like this and just make sure to break that loose. You do not want these to strip. And I'm sure some people do these with like a drill and then they say that I'm being too uh, worrisome about it. I don't want to strip one. So I'm gonna use a screwdriver instead of a drill or an impact. This one doesn't look so bad. It's super dry though. If it's a good gasket, oh, it's actually. So that, especially, so this car has 170,000 miles on it. That rarely happens to where your, your gasket comes off in one piece like that. I can guarantee that you can see part of this upper one missing. Um, literally the gasket's hanging out right there. And we found that piece in the pan. So that's cool that that came off like that. That really doesn't happen like that. Normally you gotta get like a razor blade and get it off like that. Okay, so that one, I didn't even apply any pressure and it was already loose. And that one, um, the reason that's probably loose like that is because this corner, I'm gonna guess that this corner of the gallery gasket is missing. So that one was already loose. Didn't need to apply all that much pressure. For this one right here, um, that Phillips head, it's kind of a pain to get to, but we made this 
uh, screwdriver, we kind of filed down the tip of it. You, a lot of people take these off. There's no reason to take these off right now. Um, but basically we made this little tip in here and it'll fit right under the cam gear like that. You apply a ton of pressure. And you can break that loose without having to pull the, the phaser off. Now, since it's loose, I'll grab a, a skinnier Phillips head and get that out the rest of the way. Like so. That one is uh, the trickiest one to get to. No, don't you love when you drop your Phillips head in your bucket of oil? I do. So that one was loose too. Yeah. So that piece that we found in the oil pan is that piece that's right there. No way, this one came off easy too. Oh God. That's so, that never happens. To get that off in like one piece, that never happens. Cool, so we got those gaskets off. Surprisingly, they were in immaculate condition. I mean, immaculate condition for how many miles are on this motor? Normally it's all stuck to the, <laughs> stuck to the cover and stuck it in here and you got to take a razor blade and you got to get all that out of there or a wire wheel. Um, it is it is ready to go back together now. Um, to put it back together, uh, we got to clean all this stuff off, all this old RTV. Um, got to clean all this off, clean the bottom portion off. Yeah, we'll clean this whole cover up and then clean the, uh, the outside cover, made it together and call it a day. Yeah, this thing's had a pan job before. So we're going to kind of go over um, what parts we're going to be installing now that we have everything apart. So we got a new tensioner right here. It's always nice when you get a new tensioner because they come preset. Normally you got to like pinch this down, then you got to put it something small enough. I never have a pin that'll fit in there. Now I'm going to keep this pin, but um, we got new O-rings for the water pump right here. We got a new... Water pump right here, nice and shiny. We got a new thermostat, got a new thermostat gasket. We got a front main seal. I don't know the technical name for this ring O, but these go uh, on the top gallery gasket that kind of looks like a gun. There's two of those. And then we got uh, six of the oil, oil camshaft seals because there's six of those right here. One of those is cracked, so we'll be replacing all six of those. And then um, I had talked to you earlier about the, the dipstick O-ring. We got a new one of those too. And uh, the Allen head replacements for the gallery gaskets. And then the gallery gaskets themselves. So before we put um, the gallery gaskets in and water pump, uh, I'm just gonna kind of do some of the minor stuff. I talked to you about that O-ring. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you got yourself this far, I probably you probably don't need to watch this, but get a little pick, pull your old one off. Here's your new one. Clean it up a tad. You got your shirt on, so use it. Oh, look at her, she's brand new. Imagine that. Slide your new O-ring right on. Boom. Imagine that. Keep it 100. So why are you spraying those? Um, because there's oil in the holes and we're gonna put red Loctite in there. So try and just get them as dry as possible and dry those out a bunch, but. Okay, so um, we put the put the galley gasket cover on. Uh, we tightened it all the way down by hand, and we got a little torque wrench right here. It is 11 foot pounds, 10 to 10 to 12 foot pounds, or 132 um, inch pounds. So we're gonna go through that and torque that. We have a torque sequence right here. Um, so we will replicate this. So I'm gonna do the first one, 
If you can count to, if you can count to 13, you can do this. Um, so I'm gonna start with number one. Number one, right here. There's that. Number two is right here. There's that. Number three is right here. that then we go up to number four there's that we'll go to number five so that one is done so we're gonna go over here we got replacements of these o-rings we'll just pop those out now wow those are so hard Take those guys out right here. Let me grab this rag. So we got that all cleaned up. It's so nice that these were in good condition. It's all smooth right here. So I'll grab our gallery gasket like that. Line that up. Grab one of our Allens. Get that lined up like that. And when you are when you're starting these, start them start them by hand. Don't just grab an impact or something and blast these in. These are very coarse thread, and they will cross thread very easily. And that's the last thing you want to be doing is drilling a bolt out of the front of your cover and letting all that metal shavings fall in there. Just take the extra two minutes and put them in by hand. Two, three, four, five. So we got those all tightened down um, with the little electric ratchet. We're gonna come back through here and torque them. So number one's right here. There's that. Four. Six. Seven. Okay, so that's all 13 torqued. Um, now we will pull the <clears throat> pull the water pump out of it. All right, so we got the the gaskets are in. Uh, it's time to do the time to do the water pump. And when you when you pull the water pumps out, it always it always drops a bunch of coolant. Um, obviously, the lower pan's open and stuff, but the runoff is gonna go, it's gonna wanna go in the motor, it can go in that way. So I just, I take a little piece like this, just of tape and I put it under. And I kinda just tape that like that to try and direct as much water out or coolant out of the, um, out of the inside of the motor. Cause you don't want a bunch of coolant going into your block like that. So I'll do that. And then uh, that kinda just helps, helps the coolant stay out of the block. Got to pull that guide off because you can't get to it. See, see, I told you, everything you don't want to fall in there falls in there.
And these uh, these definitely take some love to get out. So don't be don't be alarmed when it, it's kind of a bitch to get out. Yeah, this motor's definitely been taken apart. Normally, the water pump um, is like all corroded and stuff, especially with this amount of mileage. So, somebody's been in here before and uh, changed this stuff, which is good. I mean, that's just preventative maintenance, I guess. All right, so I um, I got the the water pump housing cleaned up a little bit, and or not a little bit, but I got it all cleaned up to where there's no fluid in there, and then I grabbed some grease and I. Put All right, so I um, I got the the water pump housing cleaned up a little bit, it's kind of, or not a little bit, but I got it all cleaned up to where there's no fluid in there, and then I grabbed some grease and I. that back up Put this guide back on, grab that bolt that fell out of here. Since the water pump's on, uh, water pump, guide gasket, everything's done. Um, we're gonna knock out the thermostat right now. So we'll pull that out. Just a few 10, just a few 10 mils on there. Two on, two on the sides, one on the bottom. And since we did the water pump first, not too much coolant should come out. Doesn't look horrible. So I'm just gonna go through here and wipe this cover, get any residue off of it, make sure that we got a good seal on the new one. Since it was an actual gasket that came off it, it didn't leave any uh, material behind where it's gonna give you a leak. Got a new gasket for it. And we'll pull. It looks, look at it, it looks like a little person right here from how I taped it up. It's got little shoulders and a little thing. Our person's going bye bye. Bye, person. And I mean, this is what I do. It doesn't, it doesn't get every single bit of it out, but at least it keeps the flow of the water out. You know, I mean, like you can see right here, I got a couple little drips right here. But before I started doing this method, it would be completely soaked in here. So. Now that I know, I know that coolant didn't go up into the girdle. I know it didn't go behind the oil pump. Um, that's kind of why I do this is to keep 98% of the coolant out. All right, so all the goodies are on. Um, I'm gonna throw the, uh, the timing chain arm on and then I'm gonna put the chain on and then put the top guide on and then last but not least, put the tensioner on. Check timing, make sure everything's good. And then I'll start clearing the cover, like clearing by cleaning the cover, I mean, uh, with like a razor blade, get all the old silicone off this cover and the back cover, and yeah, be ready to assemble. So I'm gonna tighten this arm up right here. Like that. Now I'm gonna grab the chain, and uh, there are marks on the chain that are extremely important. <clears throat> you have every two yellow marks right here. Those go on our top timing marks that we had talked about. And then this mark also goes on this timing mark right here. It's not the same one that's up here because obviously that's pointed up. There's a timing mark right here on the bottom. So you need to make sure that it goes like this. 
So that timing mark is on the center of that hole. Then you come to this one. And that is kind of, it does happen sometimes where um, these kind of move just a tiny bit. So that's off right now. I need to make sure, I need to get that over before anything. It's very, very, very important. So these, these cam phasers move just, just enough to where this um, chain doesn't want to sit on there. Uh, get yourself a breaker bar because if you use a ratchet, this is all under tension. So if you use a ratchet, the chances of this thing going on like the next cycle is pretty high. So this gives you, this gives you the control to kind of keep the cam phaser to, to not jump. And you can feel, you can feel when it's going to take off too. So yeah. You can hold it or pull it back a little bit more. Can I try that right there? Good. So you just kind of walk it <clears throat> and then you walk it back to your mark um, and this this tightened up a little bit too that's on this mark and you're gonna walk you're gonna come down here put that over this guide right there didn't jump back right yeah. all right rides on that and then you want to make sure that this one goes on that like that so right now you have your your phaser mark the circle is up on that bump that we talked about the second one is on that bump the circle is in line with the yellow part and the bump up there and the orange mark is on the crank guide um, that notch right there so I'm gonna let this let this out a little bit like that and I'm gonna put this top tensioner on Dropped a bolt in that bucket again. Gotta love it, go fishing. And you cannot be too safe with this. Like, if you do all this work, you're, you're doing preventative maintenance right now. And if, if you like overlook something, you literally are gonna have to, I don't know if it'll blow the motor right away, but you'll have codes, you'll have, you'll have a bunch of issues that you don't wanna deal with. So see, just like that. That one kind of walked over a little bit and I had to double check it. And just now that chain, I gave it a little tension on here and it jumped a guide. So always double check. Like literally just now I was ready to put the, t the last tensioner on and the cam phaser hopped over one part of the tooth. Okay, just keep that right there for a second. Right now I'm putting the final tensioner on. Um, all of our marks are good. Let me zap this down. So before, before you do this, since this pin's set in here, check your marks one last time. It does not hurt to be safe. That mark's in line, that mark's in line. And right here you pull this and everything will tension up. And you can even check it again after you do that. But um, timing is set. Everything is right right now. Um, since we pulled this off at top dead center and we didn't pull off the, the secondary the secondary chains, we're, we're putting this back exactly how it came. Just these marks basically are what aligns everything together. So if you have all those stuff, all those things that we talked about lined up, then you'll have no issues at all. If you do not have this aligned, like say that, 
say that you can't get this chain, this yellow mark to line up on here, or this yellow mark on here, or if that, it is very common for, um, like I was saying earlier, this phaser, like if, if you have too much tension on it, trying to get the chain back on there and it spins, it'll go to, it normally this mark will go to like right here, um, or it'll come back depending on which side of the lobe it, because basically in a cam, they're shaped like a teardrop, so when you get it to top dead center, it's the least amount of resistance on all the cam lobes. And if you put tension on that, um, either which way, it's going to want to jump either that way or this way. The likelihood of this moving is, is very rare, but these do jump around. So just, you, you have to have everything lined up perfectly or your shit's fucked up straight up. Like, yeah, that's all it is. This just takes a while getting this shit all nice. Um, cause even though, even though that looks smooth and nice, you got to get all this down to bare metal and not drop any of it inside the motor. If you use a fresh razor blade, it will make your life way easier. When you're doing this cover, you must make sure everything is like super clean like this. This right here will, will not fly because of the old material that you see there. All this stuff that looks kind of good, there's not like big clumps, that's still not good. It all needs to look literally just like this portion right here, where it's all shiny and there's no extra shit on it. Like it is, it is very important because you do all this work and then you put your thing together and you might've like gone a little too fast on this. Now it's just gonna leak and now you're gonna have a leak. I always throw a little brake cleaner on there. Kind of just helps break stuff down and it keeps it, uh, keeps it like a liquid instead of like a dust if it does fly anywhere. So it should fall down. Oh, the cover is very clean now. Um, obviously there's a little oil. I just blew everything out to make sure everything comes out. So I'm gonna come over here, spray a fair amount of brake cleaner on it, and I'm just gonna walk around. I'm gonna start in one area, and I'm gonna walk around the whole cover. Um, basically this is just making sure that there's no oil or um, gasket material right there and I'll do this again right before I um, put the cover on. I got my got my little apprentice um, teaching him how to as well. Teaching. Good, I got it. So what are you guys replacing? Uh, VVT solenoid VDD? D -D -D -D. V -V The VTC solenoid uh, gaskets, like right here, the ones that go on the outside, and then there's three that we talked about earlier um, that go around these little shafts. So he's getting those cleaned up for me, and I'm going to take this, and we're going to seal that cover up. Zach put these little gaskets around here, um, so those are all fresh. And we also have the gasket that goes around the, the main portion as well. So we'll put that on too and let this thing dry overnight. This is OEM Nissan gasket maker. Um, don't use anything else except this. Uh, the part number, part number is 999MP-1217HP. This tube should be able to get you to do this timing cover and it should also let you do the lower oil pan. Um, all you need to do is get to cover it in here to where it's like just a little bit. I mean, if you do if you do a ton, then it's going to seep inside and it's going to take forever to dry. So just do just enough. I'll show you how to do that right here, so you kind of know what it looks like. Um, I start from I start from the inside of this square right here, and I just always work my way inside out. So just do about that much. That's even debatably a little a little more than I should. 
So there's that. There's that part. Right there. And then um, what I always like to do is I do I do this last so that they're guaranteed to not fall out. Remember those little gaskets that we had right here? Um, we'll put those right in right now and then we're gonna put that front cover on. Do not forget those. They're mucho important. It goes on this seal right here and that right there. If you don't put these on, if you don't put those seals on, you're gonna have oil pissing out of here and you don't want that. It's mucho bad. And I always put, I put the gasket maker on the motor first because if, when you're when you're going to align this, you're gonna be kind of like off a little bit. You're gonna get gasket maker everywhere. And what's your trick for getting it on there? Trick for getting it on there is you're gonna to wanna to set it on this little ridge down here. And there's two locating pins. There's one here and there's one here. And once you got everything lined up, just tap it on. Just like that. All these 14s are the same size, so it doesn't matter where they go. Just slide these guys in. And the gasket maker takes takes a while to, to dry, so you don't have to like worry about doing it fast enough and all that. You'll be fine. When you're putting the tens on, um, when they go through the sealant from the factory, they're gonna have little tips of the silicone on there. You wanna take those off because it can put too much pressure and it can crack the case internally. Like obviously not up here on the top because this is a push through. It would just push the rest of it out through the top. But there are, um, there are parts like, like this one I believe is closed. Um, this one's closed. So if you put that in there and it, um, and that extra sealant from the first time is in there, you can, you can crack it. Same thing with the lower pan. Yeah, and always just go through here and start these by hand. I've said that a few times, but you always see people just not doing that. Okay, so now that all those bolts are lined up, the, the only ones that aren't lined up are those ones that go through the bottom. Um, I'm going to tighten all this stuff up on the face and then, uh, actually, I'm going to do those ones on the bottom first just to get them done. Same thing, rip that little bit of silicone off of these. Um, so that it doesn't crack, because those will crack. Those go up into the case. And one in. Okay, so those are done now. Obviously, since you're under here, um, I gotta clean this next. Um, wow, that actually is pretty clean for not being cleaned. Uh, I gotta clean that up a little bit and then clean the upper pan. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't need to show you how to do that. It's basically the same technique that we did for the front cover. And once you do that, reassemble all the motor and uh, you're good to go. We're gonna let this dry overnight though before we run any oil or coolant through it. We are gonna put those uh, 
VTC um, cover gaskets on right now. All right, so I just tightened down um, all the 10s and the 14s. Um, this one's not there, that one's not there, this one's not there. That's because that cover right there, or that bracket right there, mounts right there. Um, I'll do that right after we do this right now. I'm just wiping this down with brake clean, getting any anything off there that might be there. And uh, we got those new gaskets on. I always put one in um, first when I'm when I'm locating this thing because you don't want that gasket to go all out of shape on you. And there's also locating pins on this one. It's over here on the left side. So I'll put one bolt in away from the locating pin. I'll get that gasket to go on first like that. Oh, one side done. Uh, we can actually put this on now so that that seals up over there. Grab that other bracket. We're gonna do this other cover now. We got that bracket on. Okay, so this cover, uh, we got that all done. Um, now it is time. <laughs> so don't don't forget to do this. Um, I have forgotten to do this because it, it does look complete. It looks done. And you can't fit this in when the core support's on. So make sure to do this. Um, it's a dumb thing to forget, but I've done it before. So. But that's, that's not saying much. So you'll feel it, um, you go in and you want to have the head of this, the, the fill cap to the left and right when it like kind of binds up you turn it to the right and it walks right in. <laughs> uh. And then we will also do the, uh, the dipstick right now. Okay, so that's good. We'll put the crank on. When you put this on, make sure you get it really tight. I hit it with my impact. Um, sometimes I've seen it where to get these things off, people have to put heat to them and like all this crazy stuff. So get this thing tight. You won't do anything wrong here. That'll be fine right there. Put the AC compressor back on. Right now I am putting the wiring back on that I took off. Um, these go right here. Uh, basically um, plumbing the sensors for the front cover, uh, the AC control stuff. Um, and then we'll get over to the power steering side. All right, so this is kind of this is kind of where we're gonna end it. Um, you saw me take the front end apart. Just do that backwards. Put it back together. Um, we got all the accessories on. We're putting the tensioner pulley on right now. And when you do do that, make sure that you put the put the smooth side of the belt on this tensioner. 
And uh, there's a locating pin on this tensioner as well. So you'll be able to catch that over there. Put this on like this. And then I'll show you how to route the serpentine belt. And after that, it's basically, it's done after that. So you just go around here like this, around the alternator, around the power steering pump. Go like that, up on top of the top idler, around the AC pump. Come around the crank. And then you're gonna end up something like that. We'll get the um, ratchet on there. Make sure everything's all lined up before you let go. And there it is. So we're gonna end the video right here. Um, we still have to do the oil pan, but that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna clean the bottom of it up, clean the oil pan up, put the, put the same gasket material on there and tighten everything up, reassemble the front end and go for a test drive.